the chair now recognizes the gentlewoman uh, from American Samoa, Amata Radwagon, who with uh, her own voice uh, shares with us uh, the vision for her district, which few of us have visited uh, with a great deal of skill and has done so uh, this term uh, as a welcome voice from American Samoa. Uh, the chair now recognizes the gentlewoman, Ms. Radawagon, for five minutes for her opening statement. Thank you for those kind words, Madam Chairwoman. I know that your constituents will surely miss your fine representation, and I wish you all the best in your future endeavors. I'd like to thank Chairman Bishop for adding this to the full committee's agenda and Representative Young for his assistance in drafting this important legislation. I'd also like to thank the minority for working with us to find middle ground on this bill. In American Samoa, there are no issues that carry more weight to the people I represent than those of our fisheries. Fortunately, our fisheries conducted in U.S. waters are governed by the Western Pacific Regional Fishery Management Council, one of the eight regional fishery management councils established under the original Magnuson-Stevens Act. During the past 40 years, the council has served as the principal broker for balancing policies of local, national, and international fishery management with federal policy. The Council has performed its duties while keeping in mind the customs and needs of fishing communities and seafood consumers in Hawaii and the U.S. Pacific Island territories. This relationship has led to the Western Pacific Fishery Council drawing heavily from the Pacific Island way of doing things and blended it with contemporary science in order to ensure healthy fish stocks while considering the communities it serves. I want to thank the Council and their Executive Director, Kitty Simons, for the work they do. It is important work, and their efforts are truly appreciated. Unfortunately, our fishermen often aren't afforded the same level of dedication and tenacity that they've received from our regional councils when being represented by the U.S. government. That is why I worked with Congressman Young to put forth the Ensuring Access to Pacific Fisheries Act this bill implements U.S. participation in two new international fishery management agreements to which the United States helped negotiate. The Convention on the Conservation and Management of High Seas Fishery Resources in the North Pacific Ocean and the Convention on the Conservation and Management of High Seas Fishery Resources in the South Pacific Ocean. This bill does exactly what the title suggests. It ensures our fishermen's access to fisheries in international waters in the Pacific. Based on the administration's proposal, this bill makes necessary additions to ensure that our fishermen are properly represented in these international forums. Specifically, the first two titles of this bill ensure participation of the relevant regional fishery management councils and territories in the international negotiations of the North and South Pacific Commissions. Now I'd like to talk about Title III of the legislation, which makes critical amendments to the Western and Central Pacific Fisheries Convention Implementation Act to minimize disadvantage and maximize opportunities for our fishing fleets, especially those targeting migratory tuna stocks in the Pacific, which are absolutely essential to the well-being of the American Samoa economy. Title III also aims to ensure access to our traditional fishing grounds by requiring such grounds to be considered in any formal stance taken by United States commissioners at the WCPFC. Over the past several years, under the guise of national mon monument designations, the administration has closed off large swaths of the Pacific Ocean, which have been used as traditional fishing grounds of the people of American Samoa for centuries and long before any formal relations with the United States. It has been my experience that the best stewards of natural resources are those who utilize them to make a living, and that is exactly what the people of the island territories have done for many years. As we have heard firsthand in the March hearing on my bill, 
Science has taken a back seat to geopolitics during these negotiations, and our fishermen are bearing the burden, especially for those in the area fishing for big eye tuna. I think everyone in this room will agree that the best available science should be the only thing dictating fisheries management, both at home and abroad. The Ensuring Access to Pacific Fisheries Act aims to keep fishermen on the water by asserting science back into the administration's decisions. Time is of the essence, and it is critical that we pass and enact this important legislation prior to the WCPFC position making, position making process which will begin with the advisory committee meeting during the first week of October. I want to once again thank you, Madam Chairman. I thank Chairman Bishop, Representative Young, and my fellow committee members for working with me on this bill that is so important to our fishing industry in the Pacific and the people of American Samoa. And I respectfully urge you all to support this legislation. I yield back. I thank the gentlewoman, and especially for her testimony with regard to the views of the people of the island governments. For those of us who have never fished in international waters, your perspective is particularly appreciated.